So this here is the final product of what we will be making today. Uh, it is an elf ear. Uh, this one specifically is for Sylvanas Windrunner. Hopefully I pronounced that right. You would have seen it in my video last week on the makeup and now I'm showing you how to make the ears. So all the products I have today are some foam clay, masking tape, a foam filler, some wire, aluminium foil, paper and some pencils. So I'm starting out by sketching out a rough design of my ear. So what I did was I held the paper up to my ear, held it up in front of a mirror, measured out where the top of my ear was, the base of the ear and where it connects to, and then the outside edge of the ear as well, just so I had a rough guide of my starting point of what I needed to cover up with the foam. Then I'm just designing what sort of ear I want to make. So for this one I was doing an elf ear so I elongated from the top of the ear and joined it up to about halfway between the midway point and the lower part of the ear. And then I'm just adding a bit more detail, definition, really deciding on what size I'm going to make it. Uh, since these ones will be just hooked over the ears, I can't make it too heavy just because it will actually hurt my ears. I'm trying to keep it as lightweight as possible. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just grabbing some wire. And I'm measuring it from the tip of the ear to the top of the ear. So from the tip to the top base of the ear, if that makes sense. You'll be able to see it anyway. I don't really know why I'm voicing over since you can see the steps anyway. And I'm just doubling the measurement. So I'm measuring the ear length twice and then doubling that. And once I've got my wire cut, I'm finding the midway point and pinching it just a little bit to fit that shape of the end of the ear. And then I'm doing my best to accurately fit the outside edge of the ear. Obviously my ear will end up being bigger than my design sketch because I did it to the exact outer edge. So if you are wanting it to be exactly the same size as the design that you made, you will want to make the ear frame a little bit smaller. And then just because my wire is super flexible, um, I'm just grabbing some masking tape, holding out the edges of the wire frame and then just taping it across just to make sure it will keep the exact distance apart of where I need it to be. and I reinforce that with a little bit more tape. And once those are both done, I am taking some aluminium foil and I'm just wrapping it around the frame just to create more of a membrane or base to actually attach the foam clay to. You could probably just use the masking tape to make the membrane of the inner ear. Uh, but I decided that I wanted to do it with the aluminium foil, completely just a personal preference really, and that was how I made my first set of ears, which you saw the painted result of earlier in the video. Those ones I automatically started making it with a aluminium foil base, so that's just what I've done here. Um, and I feel like the aluminium is a little bit lighter as well, and it just gives a bit more texture for the foam clay to grab onto, so it's not too smooth that it will just slip off.
once that's all done and taped down and all in place, we get to start with the fun part, which is the sculpting with the foam clay. As you can see, it is very squishy. And I am kneading it a bit so it's just a bit more pliable. And then I am unfortunately out of frame for most of it, which sucks, but it's all I could do really. And so I am just thinly applying that and squishing it out as far as I can go to make the ear as thin as possible. So I'm just squishing out the foam clay. Uh, every time I reach off camera like that, um, I'm reaching into some water. So, hey, another thing I didn't mention at the start of the video. Um, and I'm just using that to try and smooth out as I go. Especially when you're attaching two separate pieces together, they won't always make a very smooth transition. So I'm using water over the top of that just to smooth in a little bit more. Um, it will become very sticky and it kind of smells like PVA glue or something when you add too much water to it. So if you don't like the smell of PVA glue, I guess beware. But I am literally just applying it as I go and smoothing it down with the water and just using my fingers. It will get a bit messy. Um, I used the black clay, which probably isn't the best option for when you're making ears that are meant to be kind of light coloured, I would suggest using a white or the mid-tone grey that they do carry. But yeah, I don't really recommend a specific brand, um, this is just what I had at home, uh, was the Lumens. I did also have a little tester pot by Player by Proxy, but I didn't have enough to actually make a full set of ears. But I could probably make some horns or something else out of that, so I'll have to try it out and let you guys know. And you'll just want to cover the entire thing in the foam clay, so both the back side and the front side. And if you remember that foam filler from earlier, what you can do after you've finished making your ear and it's all dried, if it is still too rough in some edges or you're still getting seams, what you do is you just grab a little bit of water, just pick up a tiny bit of that foam filler and then just smooth it in. And it is so much more liquid than foam clay and it is just amazing. I didn't film a part for it unfortunately um, since it was hell messy and by the time I realised I wasn't recording I was almost finished so it's literally just the same method um, but it will leave your hands a bit more dirtier so I would recommend as soon as you are finished sculpting with foam clay or foam filler whatever it may be to wash your hands immediately uh, that's what I did and I didn't have any residue stuck on my fingers I don't know what it would be like leaving it too much longer after that so we're getting to the even more fun part where we're adding details to our base uh, every time I set it aside, I've just put it on some aluminium foil just to try and make sure it doesn't stick too much to anything. Since it is wet, it will be a little bit harder to peel off as it gets really sticky. Uh, so I'm just creating that top ridge of my ear. Um, you can still see the design kind of under my underneath my hand um, where I wanted to create the edge and I am simply using my fingers. Um, I did grab a couple of pencils, so I do dip those in some water later and then just blend it all into one piece. You can pretty much use whatever you really feel like. Any sculpting tools if you wanted to, you could use those on it. I just used my fingers and my pencil ends just because I felt like I had a little bit more control and I couldn't be bothered finding all my clay tools, which I'm pretty sure are still covered in air dry clay anyway. And using just the same method where I'm making a little snake of clay. And just pressing it in as much as I can before going in with some water to smooth it down even more. Ooh, and you can even see the pencil technique where I'm just using the end of the pencil just to really smooth that edge in.
And with this little piece that I have here, I add a lot more water than I was before and it makes it really sticky and really squishy. And a little slippery too, which is surprising, but that's how it turned out. And so I'm just using that. Um, since I added a lot more of the water to it, it made it a lot easier to smooth out. So I've just fixed up that top curve of the ear. And then here's a the little bit that holds in your earphones. It's kind of on the lobe of the ear, so it's kind of in the wrong place, but that's how I drew it, so that's how I made it. I didn't really reference any ears, all I did was create it up in my head. Um, probably should have looked at my own ear to accurately portray the anatomy, but that's all good. And then here is the end result, if you can see, of the first sculpt with it. And then once we've got that done with those ginormous tails of leftover wire we have, I've just taken it off camera and held it up to my ear and just bent the wire around until it sat down by itself. All I'm doing is doubling over and tripling over that wire just to create a bit more strength and durability in it. And I'm also pulling that inner edge, if you can see it, I'm just pulling that over a little bit more so that I'll have something to attach into the foam later on. Now since these were still wet it probably wasn't the best idea but I did use some masking tape just to hold all the wires together then I used it to tape down the little tails of wire that will be stuck onto the ears. Here you can see I'm just taping down those tails of wire onto the backs of the ears. So what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing some more foam clay after the ears have completely dried. I had to break out the big barrel because I had run out of my small little tester pots. I like using the little tester pots to move some of the bigger clay into just so I don't risk drying out the whole thing. And so what I'm doing is I am just smoothing it all over where that tape is and that wire is just to reinforce it. Then before I started painting, I actually used some Rust-Oleum uh, spray primer sort of stuff. I just sprayed all over the ears since it was a lot easier. Um, obviously you could use some PVA glue and water sort of layers on top, uh, but I just did the primer. In hindsight again, should have used some white because it is such a light colour that I ended up using. Um, but then I painted over the top of it with my body paints and I believe I did four coats. So I'm just showing you each coat that I do. And I painted between three and four coats of this on the ear, on the front of the ear anyway, uh, just so that it would match in with my skin tone that I would have later. And then I just did one messy, pretty messy coat on the back of the ear as well, since it won't really be seen, but you still want to kind of finish it. And what I did was take some blush um, and then I just kind of dusted that over right on the edge of the ear and then just anywhere else that I could reach with that big fluffy brush. So then I'm using some more of those body paints, um, just a little bit of that thistle purple colour and then mixing it in with the blue. Um, anybody else who body paints and doesn't mix their paints directly on the pan is probably cringing right now. Um, but. I only use these for personal uses, so I don't really mind. That's what they look like freshly painted. Uh, you will want to wait between coats of paint until it's actually dry before painting on top because you will just push it around and then probably remove it all anyway. And all that hard work you've just put into it. 
And that's the end result. It's quite shiny. It was a lot more metallic than I thought it was going to be, but I am super happy with how that turned out. So here's an extra special step that I didn't include earlier because it wasn't part of the sculpture and it's kind of an optional add-on piece. I am just taking some thicker 16 gauge wire. I have no idea what the black the gauge of the black wire was so I'm sorry but this one is 16 gauge I know that much um, and it is like a gold plated sort of wire it's not real gold plating or anything just a gold tone brass tone maybe not too sure it was a while ago when I bought it uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping a ring around the biggest tube shape that I had in my house which was my biggest fluffiest makeup brush so I just wrap the wire around that and uh, this one is quite malleable so it will pick up the teeth from the pliers that I do have and so I did my best to try and tighten that around the barrel of the makeup brush as much as I could to get a more circular shape and then I just cut off the little excess pieces of the wire What I did with one of the little offcuts, they were just long enough that I could use it to pierce the foam just to create the earring. And so I pushed it through as far as I could on one side, and then pushed it through the hole on the other way just to try and clear it out a little bit more. Then you'll need to open up essentially just this giant jump ring that we've made. You'll have to open it up quite far to fit it through the pole that you've just created. And then once you've got that, you just join it up so that it is level and then just turn it through so that the join will be on the inside of the ear. So you'll never see the join and it will be a lot more secure. That's what the finish makeup looked like. So I hope you enjoy. Make sure you like, subscribe, all those fun things. And I'll see you guys next year in 2020. Bye!